Hey there, it's John from Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to explain how the subtotal function works with Excel tables. So there are a few different uses for the subtotal function in Excel. Uh, it also works in more of this outline format where we have subtotal rows and then grand total rows at the bottom. And I'm going to explain that in the next video. And in this video, we're going to look at how subtotal works within Excel tables and specifically how it works in the total row. So here I have an Excel table. And when we turn the total row on, we automatically get this row down here that uses the subtotal function in a formula. And if you don't have the total row turned on, you can easily turn it on and off. Just select any cell inside the table go to the design tab in the ribbon. And then here we have the total row checkbox. This is a toggle that you can turn on or off. So we have it on now and you can see the subtotal functions automatically added right here. And the reason Excel uses the subtotal function is it will only give us the total for the visible cells in that column. So for example, if we were to apply a filter here, I'll apply a filter for just the East region hit OK, we can see that the formula automatically recalculates and only shows us the total for the visible cells in the column. So this is great when we're tying out numbers to a pivot table or a summary report, and we just want to apply some filters to then be able to tie out those numbers and see those totals. So this is the subtotal function. Now we'll go ahead and jump into it and look at the function itself you can see that it has two arguments. And the first argument is called function number. It has this weird uh, 109 number here. When we first see this, it might be a bit confusing. If we uh, just put the text cursor there anywhere in the function number, hold the Alt key and then press down arrow, that will show us a list of all the different options for the function number argument. So you can see we have different calculation types here. We can uh, calculate the average, count, count A, max, min, and so on. There's 11 different calculation types. And you'll notice these all have numbers here, one uh, through 11, and then those repeat down here. So if we scroll down, we have 101 through 111. And by default, the subtotal function within Excel tables uses these 100 level number functions. And the reason it does that is because uh, these exclude hidden rows. So if we were to use the one through 11, these include, uh, the subtotal will show or include manually hidden rows. And that works great for when we group data. And I'll explain more about that in the next video. Uh, but for the total row, we don't necessarily want to hide the totals from manually hidden rows. Uh, because for example here, and I'll show what I mean by that, if we go ahead and clear this filter, and instead of applying a filter, maybe we hide these rows instead. We select them and we manually uh, right click hide the rows. Now, as you can see here, a uh, subtotal still calculates only the visible cells in that column. If we were to change this instead of nine to, or I'm sorry, instead of 109 to just nine, again, just uh, the function here for sum for nine and hit enter, now we're going to get the total of all the cells in the column, even those hidden cells. And for Excel tables, we typically don't want that. So using 109 or those 100 level functions, function numbers is better for Excel tables. Again, I'll explain more about that in the next video. So check that video out uh, for when we use it on the hidden rows. And I almost forgot to explain the second argument in subtotal is the reference. So this is the reference to the cells that you want to include in the subtotal function. And it's currently referencing the entire net price column. You can also have multiple references here if you have non-contiguous ranges and you want to include all those in the subtotal function. So another nice feature of Excel tables and the total row is it essentially creates the subtotal function for us. When we uh, applied the total row, we automatically had this subtotal function created here for us. And you'll also notice this little drop down box here uh, within any cell in the total row. And this also allows us to change the calculation type. So maybe we want to see the average instead. We can just click this here, and that's actually going to change the subtotal function. It recreates the subtotal function and gives us a number uh, 101, function number 101 instead uh, for the average. And we can do this in any cell in the total row. So we can just uh, select the drop down here. Maybe we want to see the max. We'll hit max, and that again will create that subtotal function so we don't have to write out 
the entire function. A few keyboard shortcuts here. Within any cell in the total row, you can have it selected and then hold the Alt key and press the down arrow and that will bring up that list. And then you can use the up and down arrows uh, to select one, hit enter. And again, that will recreate the subtotal function. Another keyboard shortcut here, if I go over to this cell, is using auto sum. And the keyboard shortcut for that is Alt equal sign. So hold down the Alt key, press the equal uh, key on the keyboard. That will automatically create the formula for us using that subtotal function. Now, one little quirk here is that it does not apply the formatting, the number formatting from the cells above. Uh, so you might want to use Alt down arrow and then select sum instead. When we do that, it does bring the number formatting down into the total row. So just a little quirk there to be aware of if you are using Alt equals sign. So that's the subtotal function for Excel tables. Like I said, in the next video, we'll take a look at how subtotal works in more of this outline format. I'll show the subtotal feature of Excel as well, which is different from the subtotal function and explain kind of the nuances here with the subtotal for function and how it works in uh, this scenario. So I hope this has helped you. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below this video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.